We are here for you. We are the creators. And we are happy to be called upon to give you this bedtime story. For our story, we are going to bring you a child who we will call Jimmy. And in our story, Jimmy is your average child. He likes to play. He likes to participate in sports. And as he was nearing his eighth birthday, he was getting excited about his birthday because he knew that he would be getting a birthday gift from his parents. And his parents would go all out on his birthday. He was an only child. But his parents were not very well off. His mother had to work as a waitress. And Jimmy would go after school to a friend's house. And be watched by the friend's mother. Because Jimmy's father would be at work and his mother would be waitressing. And they were just barely getting by financially. Jimmy's father worked at a factory and he had a good relationship with his boss at the factory. His boss liked him because Jimmy's father was such a hard worker, so dedicated and devoted to the job. And so the boss knew that uh, his employee had a son that was the same age as his son. And so he offered to arrange a play date between the two boys. The boss's son was named Tyler. And so Jimmy went over to their house and he and Tyler met for the first time. Tyler went to a private school. So they had never met before. And Tyler had all sorts of gadgets, electronics, toys that Jimmy could not even imagine having himself. And one of those toys was a video game console. And Jimmy and Ty were played on the console for almost the entire play date. It was fascinating 
to Jimmy, even though Tyler was much better at all the games, having played them himself many times, and Jimmy being brand new to the games, he was beaten every time, but still enjoyed himself immensely. And he went home from that play date and he would talk to his parents about what a wonderful thing this video game console was and how he would love to receive it for his birthday. And his parents felt nervous and anxious and a bit scared even of disappointing their son. And that night, Jimmy went to bed and his head was filled with all of the different screens that he had seen and all of the different characters in the games that he had played. And he drifted off to sleep with a big smile on his face. And that night, Jimmy's parents looked at their finances, looked at their bills, talked about how expensive these game consoles could be. And then after they bought it, they knew that it would need the games to go inside. that they would have to buy the games as well. And what they determined for themselves was that they just couldn't do it. There just was not enough money to go around for that type of expense. And so they decided that they would do the best they could for his birthday, but that it would not include the video game console that he wanted so much. And as the days grew closer to Jimmy's birthday, he got more and more excited because his parents didn't tell him that he wasn't getting what he had asked for. And so he anticipated receiving the gift that he wanted. And his parents threw him a very small birthday party. And one of the boys invited to the party was Tyler, the boss's son. And the other boy that was invited to the party was Jimmy's friend, Alex. Alex was the boy that he would stay with after school because his mother was working in the afternoons. And they were very close. They were very good friends, Jimmy and Alex. And so the time in the party came to where Jimmy would open his presents and he opened the presents from the other boys first. He received some plastic army men from Alex and a nice sweater from Tyler. Of course, Tyler had nothing to do with the choosing of that gift. 
boys know what boys like. But he had to deliver it nonetheless. And Jimmy's face showed his disappointment at receiving a sweater from this new friend whose family was very well off. And then he opened the present from his parents. And it wasn't the video game console that he had asked for. It was a bunch of little metallic cars. Matchbox and Hot Wheels. These little cars that are not even powered by electricity. You have to move them around with your hands. But they were the type of toy that Jimmy's father enjoyed so much when he was a kid. And of course they could see the look of disappointment on their son's face when he realized he had not gotten the video game console that he wanted. And what he got wasn't even close to having that sort of fun, uh, interactive experience of the video games. And so, after the party, the other children went home, and the family, Jimmy and his parents, and talked about the disappointment that he felt. And his mother and father did the best that they could to explain why there wasn't enough money to buy this video game console and how they needed the money to pay for things like food and rent. And Jimmy did his best to understand, but he was very sad and he wasn't hiding it at all. He was crying during the conversation. And his parents were heartbroken at having to see their beloved son feel such sadness but they let him feel it. They didn't make any promises that they felt they might not be able to keep. And they felt their feelings as well, the guilt and the shame for not being able to give their son exactly what he wanted for his birthday. And that night, Jimmy cried himself to sleep. And then the next day at school, he and Alex talked about the birthday party. And Jimmy talked about his feelings of disappointment about not getting the video game console that he wanted. Now, Alex was one of three children in his household, so there was even less money to go around for things like toys for the children. And as much as he tried to understand his friend's disappointment, he was actually blown away by the gift that Jimmy received. He was very excited about the little metallic cars and wanted very much to play with them. And so... 
on the way back from school, they stopped off at Jimmy's house and there was a key hidden that the Jimmy knew exactly where it was and how to find it. And so they got in the house and they took the cars with them over to Alex's house and spread them out on the floor in Alex's room. And Jimmy sighed as he tried so very much to get excited about this gift that his friend Alex was so enthused to even behold. And so immediately Alex began playing with the cars and driving them around with his hands on the floor and putting them against each other and racing them across the floor and setting up a demolition derby for them to crash into each other and even pretending that two of the cars held their families and driving those cars around to a vacation that they would all go on together. And he was letting his imagination run wild. And Jimmy reluctantly tried to get into the spirit of it all. He wanted very much to enjoy this gift as much as his friend was enjoying it. And as he looked around Alex's room, he realized for the first time how many toys he actually had compared to his friend. They would usually just watch TV after school and he never realized how few toys Alex had in his possession. But then he was watching his friend play with the little cars and delighting in the play as much as he did. And Jimmy knew that if he put a little bit of focus on appreciating what he had and using his imagination, that he also could get into the play. He could get into making these little metallic cars much more fun than they appeared to be. And so together they built a racetrack using cardboard and tape and they made jumps, ramps out of the cardboard for the cars to fly over. And they would attempt to jump the cars over the other cars that were in the set. And they began laughing and having so much fun with these little toy metallic cars. Then they would pretend the cars could fly and that they were spaceships. And they would pretend that the cars could talk to each other. And then they began a whole story about the cars and what planet they were from and how they could transform and they used their imaginations to see the cars as 
transformers and as being able to come together to create one gigantic car that could also fly. And their imaginations continued to run wild where there were stories that involved little people inside the cars and what they would do, where they would go, and how much they would enjoy having a real car to drive. And so from that day forward, every day, that Jimmy would go over to Alex's after school. They would play with the cars together and make more and more elaborate racetracks and jumps, and they got string involved, and they used the cardboard that is at the center of paper towels and toilet paper rolls, and they did everything that they could to build uh, a whole functioning city around these cars. And they played, and they played, and they played some more. And their imaginations were the actual toys that they were playing with. They would find new raw materials all the time, empty soda cans, sticks and bark from trees. They used everything that they could find to be creative and to have as much fun as they could with these little cars. And they grew closer and closer Meanwhile, Tyler would play with his video game console, and most of the time he would be by himself playing with it. His father was too busy with work. The other children at the private school lived far away because it was a magnet school that took children from surrounding towns and cities and so on. And so he was by himself a lot with his many, many toys. Whereas Jimmy and Alex had each other and had their imaginations and let their imaginations flourish because of it. They began to write stories when they had free time at school. Scripts, ways in which they could play with the cars after school. And Years went by, and they would continue to live with very little to work with. They would not have the money. Their parents would continue to struggle just to get by. And so they would get very meager gifts from their parents. And they would continue to play and be very active and create games. With very little, all they needed was a ball, for example. And they would find new ways to play with the ball and create new rules for the games that they would play. 
and they became teenagers eventually. And then when they turned 16, there were other kids at their school who would be getting real cars at the age of 16, cars that would belong to them or access to their parents' cars, and they would be able to go places and do things. And Jimmy and Alex were not so fortunate. They had to ride the bus, and they had to make that fun as well, as they would tell each other jokes on the bus and laugh. And they would continue to make up stories as they became teenagers. They eventually outgrew the little metallic cars and playing with them, but their imaginations continued to flourish. And their storytelling abilities continued to blossom. And their stories got more and more elaborate. And they had much more time on their hands to write stories because they weren't off in their cars going to different places like the mall or the fast food restaurant or the other places that the teenagers in their high school like to hang out. And so they eventually learned how to write screenplays for the movies, how to create a movie with nothing more than a pen and paper. They did not even have computers. But they learned the right formatting for how to create a screenplay. And they created a movie using their imaginations. And they would act out their movie and they would get other kids from their school who were around because they also didn't have access to cars to help them create the scenes from their movie. And as it was acted out, they learned what worked and what didn't work and they revised the script they made their screenplay better and better. They knew the characters intimately. Meanwhile, Tyler, Jimmy's father's boss's son, was still living in the very large house by himself. And of course, he had access to a car and he started dating very young and would be able to go places and buy things and bring them home and go to the movies. And he became very fond of movies as well. And when all the boys turned 18, Jimmy and Tyler again were faced with the reality of their situation financially. And even to go to the state university would have cost way more money than either of their parents had. And Tyler's father being a business man 
knew that his son could go off to university and study many things, and he knew that his son in particular would party a lot and probably do some underage drinking and may waste all of that time and all of that money going to a university. Whereas uh, Jimmy and Alex's parents were just, uh, again, sad and a little ashamed that they couldn't afford to send their sons to any university. Now, the screenplay that Jimmy and Alex wrote together had been copied because of all of the different players, all the different actors who would be in their productions of it that they pretended to film. And one of those screenplays found its way into Tyler's car. Some one of his dates was reading it and it fell out of her purse. She got out of the car and he found it days later and read it. And having seen many movies in his day, he recognized the brilliance and he saw the names on the cover sheet. He recognized them. And so when his father came to him and said, Tyler, I know that you could go to university and you could learn some things. But I also know that you have my genes. You have my blood running through your veins. And that means you will make an excellent businessman. Whether you go to university or not. And so I'm going to offer to give you the money that I would spend on four years of you going to university if you put it towards something that will start a career for you, some sort of business. And Tyler knew exactly what he wanted to do with that money. And so he took his father's offer to take the money instead of the schooling. And he met with Jimmy and Alex. And he held the screenplay in his hands. And he said, guys, we are going to make this script into a movie. And at first, Jimmy and Alex thought this was preposterous, that Tyler was playing a joke on them. But then Tyler explained what his father had said to him and had expressed his passion for movies. And he explained that he knew when something was good and when it wasn't. And he was willing to bet the fortune that his father was going to give him that they could make this screenplay into a quality motion picture that Hollywood would then be drooling over. And so they agreed to make their movie together. And 
they moved out to Los Angeles. And Jimmy and Alex got a very small apartment together that Tyler paid the rent for. And they made the contacts and they met the actors and the aspiring director and aspiring cinematographer and set designers. And they had enough money to make this movie And they made it into a very beautiful tale of what could be done with so little, how imagination could do so much, and the magic of a friendship. And they took their movie to film festivals And one of the major studios fell in love with their little movie and offered to distribute it and give it all of the bells and whistles that would make it even more professional. And the next thing you know, these... 19-year-old boys are looking at an Oscar nomination for Best Original Screenplay. And we are going to leave the rest up to your imagination You can decide whether they won the Academy Award and what happened after. Because that is our gift to you. We are the creators and we love you very much.